Welcome to the No Guilt Fangirls Podcast, where liking what you like is never a bad thing. Here's your host and head fangirl in charge, Patty Holiday. Hey, y'all, I'm your host and head fangirl in charge, Patty Holiday. Welcome to Pawnee, Indiana. Woo! <laughs> All right, also known as the No Guilt Fangirls Podcast. We are going to talk a little bit about parks and rec today. And as my guest, I have. Teresa. You know her. You love her. We all love Teresa. To know Teresa is to love Teresa. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> of course. Teresa has been on this show multiple times, but she is also the co-host of the other podcast that we run, which is called the No Guilt Disney Podcast. So if you haven't listened to us over there, come on, hop over. Uh, Teresa is our resident uh, Disney historian and super expert, super parks nerd, uh, super Disney nerd of all things, to be honest. Um, it's just her personality and the way she works, which is why, as I was watching the Parks and Rec special last night, I knew we had to talk because this one, this is her show. This is, right? Yeah. Well, when you said super parks nerd, I'm like, that's actually true in two senses. It can be for <laughs> Disney parks or parks and rec. These are, these are my two things. So, two things. so <laughs> that's like yeah. the most accurate title I could have. Pretty, pretty much, pretty much. Teresa, where else can people find you online? Uh, you can also find me on Twitter at Gertie the Dino. And you can find me, I have a blog called Insightful Life. Um, and also at Insightful Life on Instagram. Yes. And uh, she has lots of really fun, beautiful pictures on Instagram. So if you're an Instagram person, I definitely say give Teresa a follow. Thank you. So Parks and Rec, Parks and Rec. All right. If you are not into the show or don't know a whole lot about it, I mean, have Teresa give us a little rundown of the, the basic plot. And then we'll talk a little bit about how we both got into it and, and what we loved about the original show. And then... We're going to talk about the special that aired last night. Now, when we get to that special, we are going to spoil it. There's going to we're going to talk about how um, amazing or not amazing we thought it was. I don't want to spoil that part until you get to the end. Uh, but we're going to talk about all those details. But you'll have plenty of advance notice to know if you haven't watched that special yet and you don't want to hear us talking about it just yet, we'll let you know that that's coming. So you don't have to bebop out of here until that point. Um, I think that's fair, right, Seriously, Like, we yeah, can yeah. give them a heads up that we're going to get into that spoilery te territory in case they don't want to listen to it. But for now, tell us a little bit, what is the, what's the plot line to Parks and Rec and what's the story behind the series? So Parks and Recreation initially was pitched in a way as being a spinoff to The Office. So it's created by Mike Schur. He plays Moe's on The Office. He also is the brain behind Brooklyn Nine-Nine and a couple other series. Uh, but so it is about a, a group of people who work at the Parks and Recreation Department in Pawnee, Indiana, which if you hear that offhand, you might be like, um, why, how is that interesting at all? Because, <laughs> you know, local government is fascinating. Everybody knows this. Um, but so it starts off at the beginning of the series. There is a character named Ann Perkins and right by her house, there is a giant pit and she is not active in her community at all, but she wants to get this pit filled. So she turns up at a, a local meeting. And that's how she meets Leslie Nope, who is the deputy director of the Parks Department. And basically her mission as soon as she meets Anne is we're going to get this pit filled. And so kind of the show extends from there. The getting the pit filled, there's a lot of things that they go through to make that happen. But eventually the show kind of evolves into this group of people coming together and just improving their community and improving the lives in each other they maybe get a little too involved in each other's lives at time but the show all of it's it's hilarious but all of the comedy comes from the heart of it mm -hmm. so it's just it's about people who really care about each other and i think that's why it struck a chord in so many people that i think there's a lot of comedies where people are cynical about it and shows any shows that kind of deal with government things again are very cynical or very like here's all the problems with it and parks and rec takes the approach of we just we want to improve things how can we make things better and how can we show people we care about them it it is such a delightful surprise it was for me so 
I got into this kind of late. I did not watch it while it was on the air, as is the use with me. Um, anybody that's listening to this podcast, you know, most of my favorites are found after the fact, such as Schitt's Creek. Um, so it was kind of along the lines that same thought process here with Parks and Rec. I had heard things about it. I had heard people loved it. I pulled it up and started watching it and it lost me. It the first season, I only got probably halfway through, maybe three, four episodes in. And it was okay, but it wasn't getting me on the bingeable like level of things. As a as a flip side, I kind of felt that same way about Shit's Creek too. But uh, I just started <laughs> And look watching, what happened there. <laughs> and look what happened, right? Um, obsessed fangirl over here. And I, on the flip side, community got me from the beginning. Okay, and I just started getting into community. And yes, there will be some discussions coming about community once I get through all of those shows. Six seasons and a movie. Um, (laughs) (laughs) Anywho, uh, so it was one of those things where I started watching it. I think I watched the first couple of um, episodes and then I put it away for a really long time. And probably there was probably two years where I just didn't pick back up on Parks and Rec. And honestly, I want to say it was right when I got back into Marvel and we got Chris Pratt. <laughs> Chris Pratt brought me back to Parks and Rec. Chris, Chris Pratt as Star-Lord, when I connected that, wait, 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 these are the same dudes. How can these two guys be the same guys? Which is a whole other like at fangirl episode in and of itself is how different in the transformation that Chris Pratt went through from his early years as uh, Andy Dwyer on Parks and Rec to Star-Lord, right? But I think that's what it was that, that got me to go back. And then season two, I was all in, all completely all in. And from there, we watched the whole thing. And it was also a show that I knew my daughter would really like. She loves The Office. I knew this was kind of like Teresa mentioned, you know, it's kind of a, not, it's not really a spinoff, but that idea was there. And uh so I got her into it, and now she is a huge Parks and Rec fangirl as well as I am. So we watch we watch this multiple, rewatch it all the time, all the time. Uh, how did you get into it? Like, did you just always know you wanted to watch this, or did you watch it live, or are you a binger like me? I knew I knew I wanted to watch it from the start, um, hearing the premise, and so it is. It's filmed in the style of The Office, in that there's the talking heads that you know. So you have. The, the one-on-one, the direct talking to the camera here and there. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I remember recording the first episode or I watched it live and I was like, it's it's okay. I'll give it a chance and see what happens. And I think after the second or third episode, it just wasn't for me because I felt like it was trying too hard to be The Office. So they made Leslie Nope really was kind of being portrayed as a female Michael Scott. And I don't know, it just that wasn't what I wanted from it. It didn't work for me. So I gave it a break. And then I want to say partway through season three, when that was airing, I was talking to some people and they said, oh no, you have to go back. They, they kind of readjusted what the tone of the show was. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay, I'll I'll try it out again. So I think I I skipped the end of season one and then I just jumped right into season two because that was what everybody had told me. If you're not (laughs) feeling it right away, go into that. And Everybody was absolutely correct. Mm -hmm. So in season two, they kind of, they switch her, switch Leslie's personality from being a sort of bumbling and kind of trying to do the right thing, but it not working out and falling into different situations. They they changed it so that way she became more self-confident and assured of herself. And she's kind of goes into any situation feeling really optimistic about it and kind of knows what her purpose is and I think that's when I finally like okay I can connect to this character now because it's not just you know oh I'm I'm gonna have these zany things happen to me oops oh well to somebody who there just there was more purpose behind the show yeah and so yeah, I think and- I started at that point because I had about a season and a half to catch up on so I watched all of those as quickly as possible and then right after around Andy and April's fancy party that was where I started <laughs> watching on a weekly basis every time a new episode came out yeah and uh Leslie Nope is the kind of the central main character and she's played by Amy Poehler and love her I just love her and really love this character that she created and that she brought through. I had at one time on my about me page on my blogs, something along the wording of, and I will always vote for Leslie Nope. And I'm telling you, 
I should have voted for Leslie Nope <laughs> in the last <laughs> couple of elections because uh, our choices weren't all that great. But I, I adore Leslie. And I think what I love about her is she embraces my, I guess, naive interpretation of what I wish government was truly like. I wish that it honestly could be a conversation with no political like positioning and backstabbing and trying to get something that works for me so that I can hold it over your head later or you know whatever this nonsense that we always do all the time. I love how she is just genuinely passionate and proud of her city and she just wants to do the right thing for the people of her city. And so if I was a politician, that's how I would be. And I would, I would get my lunch eaten. I, I could not, <laughs> I well, wouldn't be even, so awful. There is a storyline where she's trying to get onto the city council. And mm -hmm. even within that, you see where she has run-ins with other people who are on the city council or people that she's running against in the election who do try to, to pull that with her. It's like, oh, if you do this, I'll do that for you. And you can kind of see her approach to that. I think is another thing that, you know, oh, this would be ideal if this was if this was how people handled those kinds of situations in real life. Yes. Yes. So it, it and, and what I also loved about this, the show is that uh, they incorporated a lot of real life uh, things that were going on into the writing of the show. So like government shutdowns was a big issue during one period of this. This show ran from oh, gosh, 2009 right. to 2015. Yeah, 2015. And uh, they incorporated a lot of, you know, things that were happening. So like the government shutdown was, you know, part of this and um, cutbacks. And, you know, it just, it was really true, which was also why when I saw that they were bringing back the cast and they were putting together a special for this, a special quarantine episode, I was just kind of nodding my head from the get-go because it fit with what the show was like all along. It, this wasn't a reach, you know, to make this kind of an episode fit, even though uh, the, uh, the series actually ends like way, way in the future. And obviously we're not way, way in the future just yet. <laughs> so, um, but, but I, I, I was excited to see where they were going to go with it and what they were going to do with it uh, because of, you know, the history of these episodes. Now, let's talk about the cast. The cast is amazing. Um, like I already mentioned, Chris Pratt is in here. Um, Aubrey Plaza plays his wife. Amy Poehler. Nick Offerman is Ron Swanson. Who is also I, just Nick Offerman. <laughs> let's, who is in, let's be pretty, real about that. <laughs> pretty much. At least that's as much as I know about Nick Offerman, this was not I don't want to say it wasn't a stretch for him to act, but I think that was very much his personality. And it's amazing. And Ron Swanson is my spirit animal at times where I'm just like, I love this guy so much. Uh, he's great. He's great. There's just, I mean, it was chock full of amazing um, actors and actresses. And so you guys got to check this out. If you have not started watching Parks and Rec, it's a feel good show, right? Yeah, absolutely. It's I think it's one of those shows, especially if I'm ever in just a bad mood or not a great place, I can put on, you know, two or three episodes and I'm, I'm, yeah, it, it lifts me up instantly. It lifts you up. Yes. That's, and it was so smart that the writing was great. Um, it was clever. I know that they had a lot of um, periods of time where they were also allowed to improvise and <laughs> When you see some of those behind the scene improvisations, because uh, super nerds like Teresa, I know you've seen all of those, right? Maybe, um, <laughs> maybe just just a few times. Uh, they're they're pretty amazing. Even the stuff that didn't make it on was hilarious. And um, I mean, what a great cast! When when I uh, again, not spoiling yet, I'm not at that point. But I, when I was watching the 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 uh, special episode last night. Um, everybody quarant is in quarantine. And so they all filmed their shows individually in quarantine, but they were together. Like they were still in sync. They were, there was, I could just feel this love of each other from this cast. That was pretty powerful. Uh, even, even by the way that they were doing this and this, you know, holding their, their, their cameras up and taking and, and shoot, shooting it, you know, I mean, I don't know if they were sent equipment, I would guess they were, um, you know, just set up. And so they weren't just doing it on their webcams like we are, but, um, <laughs> but I, I just really adore this cast and feel like they were 
they were special. They were special. And it wasn't, you know, it wasn't a mistake. Uh, one of the, the other things that I noted, and um, I think it was mentioned last night on the, the Poly uh, Center clips that they, they shared, was how female-centric and female-positive it was as far as the relationships uh, between the cast members. A lot of times in TV shows, to get a laugh, you have women pitting themselves against each other. And you didn't get that. You didn't get that from Parks and Rec. Yeah, and a lot of shows will make full storylines out of that or kind of, mm-hmm. like you said, the back and forth. And there may be like one-offs here and there about trying to figure each other out. Yes. But there was never, it was it was never a central storyline of, oh, we're, you know, I don't like you. We're going to do all this stuff to try and get back at you. Ha ha, let's be catty women. I mean, the right. show is the one that introduced and made a phenomenon out of Galentine's Day. Yes. <laughs> so it was very Leslie much. Leslie Nope. Thank Leslie Nope. Next time you celebrate Galentine's Day with your girlfriends. <laughs> yeah. And so I think, you know, we talked about the optimism of the show, but it was just, it was very celebratory of people and the different things that make every individual a little unique and what makes kind of coming together, how that makes people and whatever you're trying to do, whatever your effort is more special. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. All right, guys, we are now going to enter into spoiler territory for the uh, Parks and Rec NBC special that aired on uh, April 30th, which is we're recording this the next day. So it happened last night. So if we say a lot of last night and you're listening to this in two weeks from now, come on, man, it's podcast. Um, <laughs> but uh, we're going to go ahead and, and dip into that spoiler territory and if you are ready to turn this off now, we get you. Come back and listen to us when when you're ready to to have that discussion. Uh, but Teresa, go ahead and give us the setup of what the what the, the the deal was for this particular episode, why they did it, what it was about, and um, also kind of like what the plot was. Sure. So I will say, going back, Mike Sure had said that at one, you know. He really never thought that they would come back and do anything else because of how they wrapped up the show. He felt like he said everything he wanted to say and he didn't want to film a reunion special or he didn't want to film anything else for Parks and Rec that didn't feel natural and didn't feel like it, you know, there was a good reason behind it. So you had mentioned earlier that because they touched on a lot of real life issues, COVID-19, this is something that if the show had been airing, they absolutely would have addressed it. Mm-hmm. And Leslie's the kind of person who she really would want to make sure she's staying in touch with all of her people, even if she can't see them in person. So that was kind of how they they were able to pitch the show and put it together. So it starts off with they kind of have a phone tree where they're calling each other. And then a few of the the recurring characters who have some of their own TV shows in the Parks and Rec universe, they come up and kind of start to interact with each other. So the show also... it. Had aside from just having a reason for the characters to be there, they had a specific reason for wanting to film this reunion special, and that was to raise money for Feeding America for people who right now there there are a lot of people who have some, you know, are having some struggles with making sure they can get the food they need or get whatever resources they have. So they wanted to do this as a fundraiser. I know they also partnered with Subaru State Farm. And there was a third one, but I can't recall off the top of my head. But so they also, if you wanted to go and make a donation to help support this cause, it's the website address is feedingamerica.com slash parks and rec. And I know that some of these companies, they were matching gifts up to a certain amount. So go go check that out if it's something you're interested in doing. Um, but yeah, so I think they they decided to come back and film this. Like I said, there was a reason for the characters to be there. There was a reason to... a a good reason to record this episode to try and put something positive into the world. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, I don't think it was last week. I think it's been two weeks now. A couple of weeks ago, we had the Disney family sing along, which I also absolutely adored and loved every second of that. Well, this was kind of along the same, the same lines is it was something uplifting and it was something that, I don't know, I felt like we needed uh, at this point in quarantine uh, to bring a smile to our face. And it was also, it had a little bit of a message there that they repeated a few times, uh, but it, it all fit with Leslie Nope. And this is the, absolutely, if you were friends with Leslie Nope, this is the kind of thing she would tell you, take care of your mental health. You need to take care of yourself. You need to, you know, 
be, we need to have this communication and this, you know, contact with each other in this time, especially. And that's why this phone tree is important. And yada, 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 yada. And that's kind of what the shtick was. And it worked. It worked. They were doing Zoom calls, basically, the whole, uh, the whole They were, time. they were grizzle calls. <laughs> grizzle calls. Grizzle, that's right. Grizzle calls. Uh, so they were doing that the whole time. And, and in very Parks and Rec ways, they had their names, you know, at the bottom. And like, <laughs> Ron's was ID blocked. <laughs> And um, uh, Aubrey Plaza, she she her said uh, Satan's, Satan's niece because <laughs> she's a hot mess. Um, when well, I loved watching their looking at the backgrounds because in mm-hmm. a couple, of, especially when it started off, Ben and Leslie are two of the first characters who are interacting with each other. And so I remember looking, I was like, I'm looking in the backgrounds to see like all the little, the touches because, you know, it stumps off right away. There's an episode where Ben loses his job and he's depressed. And so he decides to create this claymation uh, <laughs> video. And so in his background, you see the set of his, the claymation studio that he made. And then right after that, he brings out the character and holds it in references. It was amazing. Like I, as soon as it I saw was. that, I was like, yes, this is what I want. <laughs> well, and, and, and here's my question. I want to know how much of that like, did Adam Scott have that at home? Or did they send it to him saying, we're going to need you to, you know, this is going to be a part of your suit. I mean, like, how much of it? Because Andy had a lot of stuff. He had a guitar. He had the shirts. um, He had his Johnny Karate costume. I I definitely believe that they had the clothes. I wouldn't be surprised if they they took that with them. Especially Mm -hmm. like, you know, uh, Ben and his letters to Cleo (laughs) t-shirt. Like, of course, that's going to come back. I did think, well, and I was trying to figure that out, too, for especially his scene that had the the set on there. I was like, is this a Zoom background? Or did he actually, like, does he actually have it there? (laughs) It spent a little bit of time trying to figure out which it was. Um, I, but it wouldn't shock me to hear that, you know, he actually had the doll at the house. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if that was something he took with him. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. It was, it, it was just, it was so funny. And, uh, and there were, there were all these little Easter egg touches and throwbacks to, um, you know, the, the big fans that, that loved the show. And that was fun to see too. And then you, you, and I know you saw it, um, Ben and Leslie's wedding picture. Yes, of course. <laughs> was sitting in Leslie's uh, point of view so you could see that um, as well. And uh, yeah, and and they the way they did this was also really smart. There was ex- so there's a couple of couples on the show and I kept thinking how are they going to do these couples who obviously are not quarantining together because they're not related. So for example, um, Rob Lowe is married to um, Rashida Jones on the show, not in real life. Um, (laughs) So how were they going to explain why they weren't together? And it was really smart and really great. And it fit. Um, She plays a nurse and Perkins is a nurse. And so he, you know, explains that she has been volunteering. So we are self quarantining in our own house, which a lot of families are having to do right now. Uh, if they have the essential worker that has to go out and do things, they are self quarantining just like this. I, I just thought it was, it was smart. They, they know what real life America is going through right now. Right. And they kind of incorporated those points into the show as well. And, uh, I loved it. I loved it. So that, that that was one explanation as to why they were in two separate uh, photos, <laughs> two separate boxes on Grizzle. Uh, and then Andy and um, April Ludgate, uh, the April and Andy are also married and they had them separated. And I loved that explanation. Yeah, it's I absolutely believe that Andy would get himself <laughs> locked in a shed and that April would just kind of wait and see what happens. <laughs> She would totally leave him there. It was great. And Andy's like, hey, Burt Macklin, FBI, which again, another little throwback for those of us who've seen the show, uh, you know, doesn't need help getting out of this measly shed, you know, and and just like I said, they were just really smart about how they they set people up uh, to well, touch on that. Okay, the show was also really smart, too, because we kind of touched on the finale that they did. There's a bit of a time jump, but mm-hmm. it was a uh, it wasn't a full t- like they kind of showed different points in people's lives. So it worked out really nicely for them that at the year 2020, during the time jump, Ben was a congressman. So they could explain that he would be in D.C. while Leslie is doing her work with the, the Department of the Interior from Pawnee. And mm-hmm. then 
yes and so they had gary he's he is the mayor so he's in his office you know he's working um the other thing they didn't mention this in in the show last night but i think it's hysterical is that in the time jump around now is when tom haverford you know he owns a lot of restaurants i think shortly after this in like 2023 is when they show that he's completely broke because everything all of his restaurant business the empire completely collapsed and now in my mind is like oh it's because they weren't prepared for being closed for coronavirus this makes sense <laughs> this show is amazing it knows all the things that are going to happen <laughs> look at how smart they 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 programmed that what uh in 2015 it wasn't tom's fault it really was not his fault he you know Absolutely a lot of not. things are but clearly now we know what happened now we know why Tom's business has failed <laughs> yeah no they were great and uh I gotta give the shout out to whoever uh gave Donna these lines Donna is married to or I don't know if they said that she was married or not because she might still just be dating them but she is quarantining with her partner uh Joe and Joe was a school teacher and she's like Tom have you ever witnessed someone trying to teach a group of young children something? And he's like, nope. Based on my experiences playing Fortnite, which again, super Tom Hammerford that he'd be playing Fortnite with these kids. He says, children are terrifying and they can make you cry almost immediately. And, uh, Donna goes on and she's like, the man is a saint. The job is impossible. And every teacher deserves a brand new Mercedes after all of this. Amen, Donna. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, every parent that is having to deal with trying to teach their children in this time because we're not prepared. And then you see at least my school district has been a hot mess. I think they'll get it together. I feel like we're getting to that point, but we have been a hot mess with this home homeschooling kind of situation going on, home learning. And it's the teachers who are getting the brunt of it all. They are They've got their own kids to deal with that are with them 24-7 now. And then on top of that, they're dealing with, you know, 300 children that they talk to every day on a daily basis that they're trying to teach from uh, in a whole new way anyway. So, yes, I wish you guys could all get Mercedes. I would I'd be happy to chip in for that. <laughs> Um, so overall, how did you feel about the special? I loved it. I adored it. it. It was everything I needed. I wasn't expecting much. I'll be quite honest. I was going to just be happy if they came in somewhat character. And that that, that was going to be enough to amuse me at this point in time because I just miss them so much. And obviously, you know, recording from home and doing this during the time of COVID couldn't have been easy. So I, again, I came in with low expectations, but they fully exceeded everything about it for me was perfect. But again, I was an uh, easy, eager to be pleased audience. I admit that. <laughs> what, what did you, how did you feel about this uh, experience? So starting off uh, right before the episode aired, they, if you didn't watch it, like they had the Paley Center special, which was kind of, it was partially a clip show, but it was also the characters or the actors talking about the characters and the relationships everyone had. So as soon as the episode was starting, I was already in tears as like, mm -hmm. this is, this is my show. This nothing means there's no television that means more to me than this show. There's a lot of life things the show means more to me mm -hmm, mm -hmm, <laughs> so mm -hmm. i i love it so i'm like any any chance to be back with these characters that was i'm like i i want this especially right now with so much uncertainty going on i was like this is what i this is what i need at the moment so i i was just excited to have them back in any format and i think we knew going into it it was you know it's not gonna be as smooth or as polished as what we're used to because they with the constraints that they had with filming so i thought overall it was really good the the beginning of the show when they were doing the phone tree part it felt a little stilted to me and i was i feel like part of it was i'm guessing in terms of producing it to make it happen they were could not in all of these situations be the actual actors playing off of each other so there were a few moments that you could kind of feel like they're just recording their lines separately they're not there's no one for them to play off of and i think that's that's one of the best parts about the show is the interaction between one character mm -hmm. and another yeah so yeah, there I were some think, moments that. like i said so it just it didn't it didn't always flow as well as i wanted it to um some of the characters like some I, i'm that's why i really want to know how it came together and if there were any moments that they actually were just kind of talking to each other <laughs> um like i said one the, especially the the scene that they filmed between the first one between 
Ron and Leslie, I'm like, this really could just be, this, this sounds just like it's Amy and Nick talking to each other. Like, I think this oh, is what totally. their actual Zoom conversations would be like. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. But yeah, so, so I thought it started off a little rough. But so I think once they got past the first commercial break, so the, you know, kind of the last two thirds of the show, mm-hmm. when they started to do the, there was the, the Joan Calamezzo conversation, her, she had her Joan at home. Um, and you had the, you heard with Purd. Once, once we started getting into that and like the the commercials that other side characters were filming, that's when it really all came together for me. Oh my uh, God. I, you know, we John talked. Raffio sent me. I... Right. We've and we've talked about <sighs> the the main cast. We've talked about how fantastic this mm-hmm. core group of characters are, but all of the citizens of Pawnee are just uh, so amazing. Pern yep. Happily is one of my favorite. I will I quote him constantly in real life. So I I love all the side characters that they have. And I saw I saw an interview that Mike Sure did that once he as soon as he pitched this idea, you know, he sent it out to some people. He asked the the cast directly. He said he heard back from everybody within 45 minutes that they were all in and ready to do this. So I think you could tell that a lot of these people, they were excited to be back in their own characters. Uh, Mo Collins, who does Joan Calamezzo, she was just, she's fantastic. <laughs> um, so I was, I was excited to see who they brought back. Um, you said Ben Schwartz doing John Ralphio. Um, mm, he was so funny. And of course we tried to call the number and of course. I know, I, I did the same thing, <laughs> didn't go through, which fair, I can understand <laughs> that it would be, it would be a lot to get that set up too. Um, but it would have been, that would have been awesome to have like just some recording of him playing out there. <laughs> no, it was pretty, it was pretty amazing when it got to that point and they started bringing in all these side characters too. So they're absolutely, they could just, like I said, they packed a lot in this 30 minutes. Now, at the very end, guys, I was not prepared for this. I don't know why I didn't expect it, but I didn't expect it. I did expect all of them to come together and be in one Zoom call, which is what they did. So uh, along the lines of in the beginning, it was just one or two characters at a time on screen, sometimes up to, I think, four characters. And they were having their Zoom moments and their Zoom discussions. Um, But then at the very end... Uh, Leslie mentions how sad she is that she can't see everybody at once and how jealous she gets when she knows people are having conversations without her, (laughs) which is a very Leslie thing. She wants to know what everybody's doing all the time and wants to be part of it. And uh, sure enough, they work that into the story where they all end up on this one big uh, grisly phone call together. So it's what it's like. I don't know, nine, 10 of them. I can't even, I don't even remember how much it is, but basically it was all the main characters brought in together and they surprise Leslie. And then that, this is again where they surprised me. They kick it off and Andy brings out his guitar and he starts singing the little Sebastian song. Yeah, it's, I think anybody, if you didn't, if you were a fan of the show, you absolutely got emotional during that sequence. Uh, Why? There's... What is it about that? Because it's, I mean, I I, I kind of, I, I laugh every single time Lil Sebastian is mentioned because I am totally Ben Wyatt <laughs> and, and his reaction like, why? It's a little horse. But, and that's the joke is that he's just like, it's just a little horse, but everybody else is so emotional and so intensely in love with little Sebastian that they, they tell him basically he's being stupid and to shut up the entire time, right? And they did um, tell him to do that last night. They did <laughs> the quiet night. man. <laughs> they did. They did. It was awesome. I mean, it was just it was just so perfect. But that's what I think what A surprised me is that they incorporated Lil Sebastian into the show, which made me so happy. They had this huge sing along. They all were singing the song. And that had me in total complete tears. I was just like, is it COVID? Is it this? Is this lockdown? Is this my breaking point? Like, why am I crying over Lil Sebastian and the Parks and Rec crew singing it? Why did that make me so emotional, Teresa? Please shrink me well, right now. I need to understand. So I can say for me, um, this, I actually am getting emotional talking about this yeah. because, again, because just how important this show and this cast is to me. There is a moment in the finale of the series where everyone's kind of getting ready to go their own way. And Leslie has this quote that she says, but when is this group of people ever going to be all together again? And she's Mm -hmm. talking about how she just wants all of these people in the same room together. And I think to one extent, the emotional part of it was because, you know, five years later, which we never thought we'd get, we have all these people together together. 
not just as the actors kind of reliving it, but all these characters are together again, which, you know, we never, I never thought I was going to get that. And I think along with that, there's also the emotion right now that a lot of us are feeling is, well, when, when do we get to be together again? Mm -hmm. And I think we're all, we all have people that we're missing. We all have people that we want to be with in person and we can't right now. So I think, especially for the show, you know, they have little Sebastian, 5,000 candles on the wind. This is something that brings them all together. And I think we all just, we're all craving that kind of unity and getting to see it with characters that have meant so much to us over the years. It's a, just a small little bit of, you know, we all will get to be together again at some point. There are ways that we can all be together right now. Um, but I think it's just, it's that whole emotion of, I, I love these people. I want to see them again and getting to kind of be with them in quotes, you know, be, getting to be back with them, even just for a few minutes. I think that's where the emotional release just started to come out. <laughs> oh, completely. No, complete. I think you're exactly right. I think that's, that's why. And it was, uh, my daughter just kept looking at me and she was like, are you okay, mom? <laughs> I was like, no, I'm not yeah. okay. And I and I know that part of it is just it comes back to the heart of the show. There's no one to dislike on this show. I mean, even Gary, we all right. really do love Gary. <laughs> Damn it, Gary. <laughs> the joke is that nobody likes Gary, uh, but he's adorable and he's so sweet and he's just this great character. But for whatever reason, all the Pontians like do not like Gary. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's just one of those jokes. But um, but yeah, I mean that it just it was it was a really great and it was so smart for them to end it like that. And I watched. Did you catch Rob Lowe? Like. Oh yeah, like he was. <laughs> Rob Lowe was he, all of us. <laughs> he was all of us. I was like, I'm right there with you, Rob. Um, yeah, it was it was great. So if you haven't watched it, or if you need to watch it again, I also have a link here. I'll put in show notes that says where you can go and watch this special, and also where you can watch all of Parks and Rec because it's worth it. If you are just in need of something kind of light during this time period, one thousand percent. Obviously, we recommend it, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I could just go and watch the whole series again right now. <laughs> uh, yeah, I might. I might. I had actually started uh, watching it a little bit yesterday, and it was great because I landed on uh, the season where she is running for, for council, and so Paul Rudd's in it a lot. Oh, yeah. And Oh, yeah. Um, we didn't even mention Paul Rudd started oh, off the show. <laughs> yes, <laughs> How do we yes, not right. acknowledge that? <laughs> Right, right, right. How do we not? Let's let's roll that back just a minute. So Paul Rudd has a supporting role in, I think it's, is it season three, season four? four. I can't remember. Four. Okay. Season four. Uh, and he is running against Leslie and he actually doesn't really care and doesn't want to run for it versus Leslie, who is so passionate and so completely like her soul is government you know and 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 so it's it was a it's a fun season to watch them anyway and then paul red's just so likable and he plays a very likable character even though you're a newborn yes yes uh so the way that this season or the way that this special opened was on um nope 2012 uh jacket and it pans out and sure enough it's bobby newport and it's it's paul red and did you note the first signs of Paul Rudd aging yeah. were seen last night. His beard had some gray in it, guys. I mean, the rest of him looks flawless and you right. can't tell, but his beard has some gray in it. And I was like, I see you aging so finely right there, uh, Paul Rudd. Finally, we see something, a little crack in his uh, anti-aging uh, serum. Uh <laughs> But uh, so that was fun. So yeah, he, Paul Rudd, like kicked it off right from the beginning. It was great. Um, So I know we mentioned it. If you have not watched Parks and Rec before, and this is sort of interesting you in it, uh, I know we both mentioned we struggled with the first season of the show. Mm. I think you probably could... I don't want to say skip it entirely because it's it does set up some things, uh, but you really probably could jump in at season two and then go back and watch season one later. And I think you'll you'll have a new appreciation for it <laughs> once you once you come back and you kind of see where the characters end up. Uh, and and you know when you said that, I think that might have I think that's actually the true way that I ended up finishing it. I think I started season one, went ahead and skipped ahead. And fit started from season two, the second time I started over, I don't think I finished season one. I think I did do that. I think I started into season two. And once I had really fallen in love with these characters and bought into the whole shtick of what was going on, 
that's when I went back and I accepted season one into my life. So I think you're right. I think that's my actual, the way I did it. And I would recommend watching it that way is if you could watch maybe one or two episodes in the beginning of season one, just so you kind of get characters and a general understanding and then bop ahead all the yeah. way to season two. And at some point you'll go back and you'll, you'll finish season one because you'll you'll want to you'll want more parks and, and season one is only six episodes so it's also yeah. it's very it's a short season so like i said so if you skip it there's we, okay. we established there's a pit that needs to get filled and uh andy at the time we mentioned that he ended up marrying april andy is with Anne when the series starts mm-hmm. and i believe mm-hmm. they break up at the end of season one that's really all you need to know for the first six episodes <laughs> and then, there you go and you're set. Yeah. Start season two now. (laughs) (laughs) All right, guys. Well, thanks uh, for joining me as always, Teresa. Yeah, thanks. I I love parks. I've been waiting to talk about this with you (laughs) since you started this podcast. Yes, finally get to do it. (laughs) Yes, yes. All right. Well, everybody, uh, please don't forget if you are new here and you haven't had a chance yet, if you can rate and review uh, five stars, we super appreciate it. It helps in the algorithm. It helps other fangirls find us. Uh, As I confessed earlier this week, I I know I've been slacking on putting out episodes, but I feel like we're turning that corner. Look at me, two episodes this week already. Woohoo. Uh, and I do have more planned for next week. I actually have a, a couple of good ones that have been recorded for, I think, six weeks. I just hadn't found the right time yet to uh, get them edited and put out. So there's a fun one coming on about celebrity crushes and another fun one about. Um, I think basically Disney style or, you know, rocking your Disney looks um, that in this time and day, we can't go to the parks, but you know what? You can shop. You can shop, yes. shop, shop. <laughs> so this will be something that uh, hopefully will speak your love language right now. Uh, those are coming up. Um, and I think I have another one or two hidden back that I have recorded, just haven't gotten to edit it yet. Point being... Don't give up on this podcast. It's still alive. It's still coming out. And on uh, Monday or Tuesday, I'm going to have some uh, reviews and uh, in the What You're Watching uh, series, we're going to, I'm going to talk about what we have been watching all this week. And we've got some, some info to update you there. All right, guys, we'll come back and fangirl with us again real soon. Bye. Bye.